The Valley of Eternal Spring is one of the most visually arresting areas of Immortals Phoenix Rising, with rolling grassy fields, herds of tameable mounts, trees that bear healing pomegranates, and... Hey, wait! It's okay, we got this, we got this. Anyway, lots of natural beauty and... Oh, come on! Okay, as you can see, gently swaying trees and chalky white boulders mean weaponry in the hands of big, resourceful monsters, and the Valley of Eternal Spring is full of all of those things. This seeming paradise is both the domain and the prison of the Greek goddess of love, Aphrodite, who's been stripped of her vanity and turned into an apple tree by the evil Typhon, who, despite being a rampaging fiend, has a pretty good sense of irony. True love is the giving of yourself to others. The name Aphrodite should have stood for those things all along. Before we can meet Aphrodite, though, we're introduced to the Golden Isle the same way our hero Phoenix is, by washing up on an unfamiliar shore at the very beginning of the game without any powers or skills beyond some modest climbing and jumping abilities. Filled with ruins, shipwrecks, and stone statues that used to be people, this grim starting area is known as Clashing Rocks, and it's where Phoenix will find a few essential tools, all of which are powerful artifacts once owned by heroes of myth. The Sword of Achilles and the Axe of Atalanta are for light and heavy attacks respectively, although the axe is also essential for knocking aside the shields carried by bigger corrupted soldiers and chipping away at their stamina, which can eventually stun them. Combat is about more than just hacking and slashing. A well-timed parry can also help fill an enemy's stun gauge, while a perfect dodge will slow time to a crawl, giving you a brief window to deal as many quick hits as possible. Time also slows when you're firing Apollo's arrows from Odysseus's bow, the better to steer them mid-flight into enemies, torches, or puzzle-essential braziers. When you first find the Bracers of Heracles, they're useful mainly for letting Phoenix telekinetically lift certain objects and push heavier ones, but like all of Phoenix's godly powers, they can be upgraded with new capabilities, like using them to launch yourself through the air at flying harpies. The Wings of Daedalus are the real centerpiece of Phoenix's toolkit, though. Phoenix can use them to double jump, attack monsters in midair, and, with the help of messenger god Hermes, glide across long distances, which is how we leave the cliffs of Clashing Rocks and arrive in Aphrodite's domain. Fortunately, the Valley of Eternal Spring is also where you'll find the Hall of the Gods, where you can take a breather and upgrade Phoenix's skills, health, stamina, and so on. This is where you'll change Phoenix's appearance, altering their body shape, voice, and head to suit your current mood. <laughs> Stop ripping my skin off, it tickles! You can also upgrade your gear here, and while you'll find a lot of different axes, bows, and suits of armor throughout the world, you'll upgrade them by category. And because upgrading one sword improves them all, you can focus on using the one with the right buffs and damage bonuses for your situation, instead of going for raw power. Beating Typhon and his assorted monsters takes more than a strong sword, though. You'll need the help of the gods, including Aphrodite, and convincing her to stop being a tree takes a lot of salt water. That's not a euphemism. It's literal magic salt water in two different forms. When you begin Aphrodite's Ark, you'll get things rolling, again, literally, by clearing a path for a giant pearl and collecting the sea foam it kicks up when it hits the ocean, recreating the conditions of Aphrodite's birth at least in so far as Zeus understands them. Grandpappy Uranus threw a pearl into the sea. The sea churned into foam, and Aphrodite rose up out of it. A pearl? Grandpappy? I'm not sure that's how it- That's definitely the story. Okay. Then you'll need to gather three of Aphrodite's tears from puzzle-filled Tartaros rifts, where you'll get to do things like launch heavy spheres through smashable barriers or dodge fireballs while activating floor tiles in sequence. Your hunt for tears will eventually lead you to a massive vault where Aphrodite's essence is locked away, but before then, you'll be regularly hassled by the Wraith of Achilles. Achilles is one of four corrupted heroes who will hunt you across each region of the Golden Isle, and getting him off your back for good means hunting him to his lair and battling him on his own terms. He's a lot tougher there, though, so you may want to first cut your teeth on the four legendary beasts scattered across the region, or aggressively hunt for chunks of ambrosia and lightning, which boost your health and stamina, as well as your chances of survival.
You'll be able to explore the Valley of Eternal Spring for yourself on December 3rd when Immortals Phoenix Rising launches on Stadia, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, PS4, PC, and Switch. You can also try out the exclusive demo on Stadia before October 29th or get the game at a later date via Amazon Luna. For more updates on Immortals Phoenix Rising, subscribe to this channel and visit us at news.ubisoft.com.